In the run-up run to this game, game Jersey's selection, selection procedure has been criticised and the team was also weakened by injuries to key players like Sean Acourt. Uh, Sean Acourt uh, is a fabulous player and I think they will miss him a lot today. And up front, Carberry has been selected to, to play as a striker. Do you think that's good judgement? No, I think at the end of the day they've uh, made a place for him. Um, I don't think Carberry's the same player with his back against the, uh, uh, against defenders. Do you think that it might have been better to play a few more of the Scottish team, the champions, the players in form? Well, if you want my opinion, I would have most probably gone for Greg and Ross together. Do you think Greg was fit enough? He certainly did well in the, uh, the game a week ago. I was more than surprised in the Upton Park because uh, I, I assumed once they um, were going to make a substitution, they were going to look into him, but he seemed to be getting stronger and stronger. And he lost 120 minutes, and I think they made very, very good runs wide. Guernsey's side contained no surprises, just a wealth of footballing talent. Well, it looks very strong to me, um, certainly up front. And where do you think their particular strengths are? Well, obviously, the boy Vance has got a lot of speed, and uh, if uh, they get balls in behind the fullbacks, I think he might uh, cause a lot of problems. This may be the last year a Jersey team is selected by a three-man committee. The clamour for change is growing all the time. I think it's got to come very soon. I think everybody's realised it in the whole of Jersey that um, you can't work on three-man selection. Originally, three-man selection came down because there were five to begin with, and they thought that over uh, and the next year after that it would come down to one, but it's not done that, and I think it's caused a lot of problems, and I think Guernsey has got it right. No matter what happens today, the system for me in their island is right, and I don't disagree with the people that are in charge with uh, Jersey side today that they all agree that one man has to do it sometime or other. There were tears on the pitch even before the game began. The policeman's lot was definitely a happy one. And the crowd were dressed to party. But it was Guernsey who started better. Tony Vance was put clear by a great piece of skill very early in the game and his shot was well saved. Jersey remained composed and they took the lead in the seventh minute. Andy Barker in his role as midfield dynamo found Paul Carberry in space on the left of the box and his cross found Neil Livesey who scored with a great diving header. Tony Lawler won the Man of the Match award three years ago but his match nearly ended early when he was flattened by Craig Allen. Allen was then booked. Jones' attack consists of quality players and they soon began to work well together. Craig Allen played soccer in America for 10 years and he was outstanding throughout the match. On this occasion he set Grant Chalmers free. Letizia met the cross and Carlisle made another good save. Guernsey's defence, however, played poorly throughout the first half. Jersey created several chances and went 2-0 up when Andy Barker headed a free kick past Guernsey keeper Steve Ingram. Allen returned to Guernsey three years ago and now plays for Rangers. In addition to being a skillful player, he's also competitive and wins good ball in the middle of the park. Again, he found Kevin Letizier and this effort was also well saved. The tackling was certainly fierce, although the rivalry never really boiled over. But Bill Begbie was booked for this tackle on Letizier. Jersey clawed their way back into the match in the crucial period just before half-time. The Jersey attack broke down when Craig Allen intercepted a cross by Carberry. He raced the length of the field and crossed to Kevin Letizia, who beat Carline to the ball and scored. Jersey also set up good moves by winning the ball in defensive situations. With Carberry playing as a striker, it was left largely to Andy Barker to provide the telling passes. Tony Lawler got on the end of this one, and his acrobatic chip beats the Ring Royal, but also the post. Guernsey equalised in controversial style. Allen played Kevin Letizia through, he flicked the ball up, and it looked as though Paul Bookloo headed in an own goal. But a slow motion replay shows clearly that Letizia palmed the ball past Carline with his right hand. <laughs> this enhanced slow motion sequence 
proves categorically that the ball never touched Paul Bookley's head on its way into the net. But a goal was given and Guernsey supporters celebrated. Guernsey continued to press and dominated most of the rest of the match, despite a double substitution by Jersey. Vance passed to Allen, who showed delightful skill. The move was foiled by brave goalkeeping. But Paul Carberry had a chance to settle the match after a mix-up between Guernsey's midfield players. Carberry was clear, but he pushed the ball too far ahead and the opportunity was gone. Guernsey won the match in extra time. Paul Carberry was caught in possession. The ball came down the line to Allen. He dribbled at ease through Jersey's tired defence. He then set up Tony Vance, who pushed the ball past Butlu and lashed in a first drive. <laughs> Carberry nearly equalised the jersey a little later. He appeared to have become boxed in but turned well. His shot was tipped onto the bar. Grant Chalmers gave the ball to Ricky Muddyman in a moment of madness. Muddyman lifted the ball into the box. Barker had Hammond free to his left, but shot. It was saved, and Jersey's last real chance had gone. The inevitable Allen set up Chalmers in the last few minutes. Chalmers was later named as man of the match, but he lifted this opportunity over the bar. The trophy was presented to the delighted Jersey skipper by Jersey's lieutenant governor. It was the first time in 10 years they retained the trophy, but they took their time. What made the difference in the second half? <laughs> I think we changed things around a little bit. We point out and played 4 4 2, but um, that didn't really work. The players were a bit lethargic the first half, very disappointed with them. Changed it to our normal five at the back the second half, where we looked a lot secure, a lot more secure, um, and the goals would come, and they did. Lovely. As they celebrated their win, the Guernsey players had a light-hearted message for the disappointed Jersey team.